Hi, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to derive Reynolds transport theory. In terms of importance, I would put this video at the same level as Navier-Stokes equations in atmospheric sciences. In the last video, we talked about intensive and extensive properties of the fluid, and today we are going to derive the general conservation law for an extensive or any extensive variable or property of the fluid. That conservation law is known as Reynolds transport theory. In the subsequent videos, we will see how, for example, continuity equation or mass continuity equation easily follows from Reynolds transport theory. Many conservation laws, in fact, all conservation laws in fluid dynamics follow from Reynolds transport theorem, so it is a very, very important concept. In addition to Reynolds transport theorem, while we are deriving it, we will very naturally define the concept of control volume as well as the concept of control surface, which is a surface enveloping control volume, and very naturally, you will see the emergence of a concept of a flux of an extensive property of the fluid. So a lot of new material, video might be a little bit longer, but that's just how it is. We are not here to tell the nature how long a video should be describing the nature, but we need to adapt and just try to understand how nature works. Without any further ado, let's start our derivation. Let n be the total amount of any extensive property in a given mass of fluid. Further, let eta be the amount of n per unit mass. Therefore, we can write that capital N is integral eta dm. Or, this is further equal, volume integral, capital V is volume, eta rho dv. Because dm is rho dv. Now, here dm is incremental element of mass. Similarly, dv is incremental element of volume. When we established these definitions, let's take a mass of fluid at time t and let this be this mass. So this is mass m at time t. Now fluid is moving and let's assume that this mass, this same mass at time t plus delta t has this shape. So this is mass m at time t plus delta t. By the way, these are three-dimensional, of course, this, this goes everything in three dimensions. Here we can identify three regions. Region number one, region number two, and region number three. At time t, given mass particles occupy regions one and two. At time t plus delta t, the same particles that constitute mass m occupy region 2 and 3. We will call this original confinement of mass control volume. So, this is control volume. It is important to recognize that the fluid that is making this mass at time t is flowing around and it has different shape at time t plus delta t, but control volume stays fixed. Namely, when we establish control volume, it becomes a mathematical object. Now, for this setup, we want to investigate material derivative dn dt. Kindly remember from uh, my video on uh, Lagrangian and Eulerian flow descriptions that material derivative is a time rate of change of a property computed as the mass moves around, which we have here. 
because I have finite time difference and everything here is finite, I have to express this derivative in finite differences and take a limit when delta t goes to zero. So dn dt will be a limit when delta t goes to zero of, well, final state of n, and that is n at time t plus delta t minus initial state of n, and that is n at time t divided by delta t. So this would be qualitatively written expression, and we can put it in the formal mathematical way as a limit, as delta t goes to zero of n at t plus delta t. That would be n2 plus n3 at time t plus delta t minus n at time t, that is n in region 1 and n in region 2. So minus n1 plus n2 at time t, everything divided by delta t. The next thing now that we need to do is we need to examine each of these limits. First, let's examine this limit. Limit as delta t goes to zero of n3 at time t plus delta t over delta t, which would be this one over here. The numerator in this limit represents the amount of n in region 3 at time t plus delta t. And by definition, region 3 is formed by the fluid moving out of the control volume. To quantify that, n be a unit normal, positive when pointing outward from the control volume. So let, let this be n, positive out from control volume. Furthermore, I will take an infinitesimal area around this n and call it dA. And this area dA separates regions 2 and 3. Finally, at this point where I have normal, I have some vector u which is velocity, which quantifies how the mass m flows from control volume to regions 2 and 3. Now, let's go step by step. What is u dot n? That would be component of u parallel to n, or component of u normal to surface dA. So that is scalar. Okay, then what would be u dot n times this area dA? That will be incremental volumetric flow rate. Why? Well, because u dot n is, we said, that's u normal, normal to dA, times dA. But this is further equal, u normal is some dx over dt, if we take uh, x, x is to be in the n direction, times dA. Let me just repeat what dx is. dx is distance perpendicular to dA, so in the direction of n, that the fluid will traverse in time dt having velocity u. And this dx times dA is volume dV over dt. And therefore, you see now that this is incremental volumetric flow rate. We just proved it. Let's further examine what is this quantity if we multiply it with rho. 
density of this fluid. So rho u dot n times dA. That will be incremental mass flow rate. Why? Well, it's easy to see why from this expression. If we continue from here, we get dV dt times rho. Well, rho times dV, that's dm over dt. And that's incremental mass flow rate. Next, let us then see what is rho times u times n times dA times delta t. That would be amount of mass that crossed dA in time delta t. And that's what I wrote here. And finally, if we multiply this with our eta, which is, let's just remind ourselves now, amount of any extensive property in a given mass per mass, so eta times rho times u dot n dA delta t, that will be amount of n that crossed dA in time delta t. I hope that this step-by-step -step derivation of different quantities helps you to understand what volumetric flow rate is, what mass flow rate is, and how we go from incremental flow rates to total amount of some quantity uh, flowing between different regions in the flow. Now, it is important to recognize that all these quantities are derived for infinitesimal area dA. What we need to do is now to integrate this over the whole surface of this region 2. I am integrating this over the surface, and let's call it S out, where the fluid is leaving control volume. And this is approximately equal to the total amount of n in region 3. Here I formally introduced approximately equal because all quantities in this integral will be evaluated at time t. So this expression is formally only correct when delta t goes to zero, but that's not a problem because that we will, that's what we will have in our limit. We just quantified that this over here is amount of n that crossed dA in time delta t, and then we integrated over entire surface, and that is exactly this limit. Because this limit is amount of n3 in region 3 as delta t goes to zero, and that's quantified by this expression over here. So let me write all that on another page. What we just said is that a limit when uh, delta t goes to zero of n3 at time t plus delta t over delta t is equal surface integral over the surface where the fluid leaves control volume eta rho u dot n times dA. And this is also an important quantity that is called flux of n out of control volume. So this is flux, definition of a flux. Flux or rate of n out of control volume. Now let us go back to our original limit. We just evaluated this limit. Now using pure, pure reasoning, we can immediately evaluate this limit as well. Because what would be 
limit as delta t goes to zero n1 divided by delta t. Well, this limit will tell us how region 1 has been formed. It has been formed by the original mass particles moving around to region 3, for example, and some new particles moving in control volume, which means I can use the same reasoning I used here to identify the amount of N that enters control volume. To do that, I will take, let's say, these particles enter control volume through this surface over here. I take element of that surface called dA and I take unit vector n prime, where n prime is positive inverts into control volume. Remember that n was positive out of control volume. So from figure, we can already see that n prime is negative n. And now, using this formulation, I can repeat all these steps. I can say, what is u dot n prime? Then I could say, what is u dot n prime times dA? That would be incremental volumetric flow rate into control volume. But I'm not going to now repeat all these because we had this reasoning for uh, the amount of N that leaves control volume. So I will just write that limit when delta T goes to zero of N1 at time T over delta T is equal surface integral over the surface in where the flow enters control volume of eta rho u dot n prime dA. And this is also a definition of a flux, but this is flux out of control volume and this is flux into control volume. And lastly, let's go back to this schematic and this original limit. We see that we need to still evaluate the limit n2 at time t plus delta t minus n2 and time at time t divided by delta t. So limit. But this limit, by definition of limits, check my video on limits, is delta n2 delta t. We use partial derivative here because the region of integration is fixed. Let me go back. Control volume is fixed in space. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video. So time is changing, but control volume is fixed. And that's why we use partial derivative. Going back to this figure, you can also recognize that as we let delta t go to zero, region two approaches control volume, which means that this is equal delta n in control volume delta t and that is further equal delta delta t volume integral over control volume ncv is rho eta dv and uh, remember we just defined it here look finally we have evaluation of these three limits from our original equation and we can go back and put together everything and evaluate our dn dt. So it follows that dn dt is equal, I write this term, plus this term over here, minus this over here, which is But remember from previous page that n is negative n prime, which means that these two terms are equal to, instead of minus, I write plus because n prime is negative n, so plus 
but this is further equal. I can combine these integrals because this is surface integral over the surface where the flow leaves control volume. And this is surface integral over the part of the surface where the flow enters control volume. So I can say this is a total surface integral over control surface. And control surface, let's go back here, is this. Control surface is the surface that envelops control volume. So surface integral over control surface eta rho u dot n times dA, which means that dN dt is equal this plus surface integral over control surface and this is one of the most fundamental theorems in fluid dynamics. This is called Reynolds transport theorem. This theorem in words says the following. The rate of change of n for a given mass as it moves around is equal to the rate of change of n inside control volume plus the net efflux, which is flow out minus flow in, of n from the control volume. I will repeat it one more time using this figure here because this is the backbone of fluid dynamics. The Reynolds transport theorem says the rate of change of n as the mass is flowing around is equal to the rate of change of n inside the control volume plus the difference between whatever enters and whatever exits control volume. And that's called efflux, flow out minus flow in. Notice that here, in the derivation of this expression, we didn't put any constraint on n. n can be scalar, it can be vector, as long as it is mass-dependent extensive property of the fluid. This was the great and powerful Reynolds transport theorem. In the next video we will use this theorem to derive so simple and so easily mass continuity equation. I hope that some of you can already see how it follows from this expression. If not, stay tuned next week mass continuity equation. Until then, goodbye.